Okay, let's do this. So let's do first this slide. So I'm very happy to be there. Antoine too will introduce yourself later. So this is our talk, uh, malicious use of Microsoft Labs. So we carefully choose this title. We will discuss that later on. So we work for PwC. We both are ethical hackers in the cybersecurity team. Um, I'm five years of experience, Antoine is two, and we both had to uh, uh, publish some talks to uh, various uh, um, conferences. Just a few words about uh, our uh, company. So you can see we provide a broad range of uh, cybersecurity services, technical, not technical, whatever. So today, uh, we are going to introduce what LAPS is, how does it work, and so on. Then Antoine will explain the analysis that we perform on this solution, the exploitation part, uh, and then I will finish with some recommendations and uh, conclusions. So I think it's important to give you a kind of disclaimer. You will not find a very complex uh, ADA screenshot with uh, hardcore reverse engineering and so on. No, no, it's a very simple approach. Uh, there is no new CVO, no zero day, so it's just uh, a simple stealthy persistence approach uh, that we discovered and that we discussed with Microsoft. Uh, and sometimes when conditions are, fav are favorable, we may be able to do some escalation of privileges on, uh, on Windows. So let's begin with that. So LAPS or LAPS um, tries to solve the local admin problem. I'm quite sure you all know what this problem is. When you have a Microsoft environment, then uh, you may be tempted to have uh, the same admin password on all workstations, of course, because it's it's more uh, it's simpler and so on. But of course, that's a, a pretty bad idea. So as soon as you have an identical or guessable local admin password, then a trivial lateral movement is uh, is possible. So Labs tries to solve this with setting a different local admin account on each managed workstation in the domain. And for this, uh, oh well, uh, another point uh, with that is that. Uh, it will set a password that is compliant with one specific policy, as well as automatically renew it and change it when uh, it has expired. So it looks interesting, isn't it? Of course, we first started to do some uh, Googling on trying to find out who already worked on that. Uh, and you can see that there already are, uh, there already are lots of great blog posts and lots of great papers from those guys. We really uh, advise you to have a look at those papers if you are interested in labs. But you may notice that they are most focused on server side issues, on privilege issues, on the uh, domain controller. However, on, uh, besides this, uh, labs is well documented, so if you read the doc, you will understand a lot of things. And um, when you read this, you will notice that, okay, uh, this solution is uh, as a client side component, and um, actually all tasks related to the password management are done client side. So why not looking at specifically what's going on on the client side? And this is uh, just a, a graphical, uh, I would say, uh, in order to a graphical way to justify where our talk is about. So uh, from uh, from left to right, it's just the epic pawning uh, way of uh, owning a, a Microsoft um, environment. So we start uh, on the left with no access at all to the domain. On um, far right, it is you are domain admin and you can do whatever you want. So as I said, the other researches that we cite, uh, uh, their main focus, it's not their only focus, but their main focus is what happens when something is shitty with the privileges with uh, some uh, ACLs and so on. But for today, we are going to focus on the uh, part on one specific workstation that could be or that may be corrupted. So how does lab work? Uh, well, actually, it's fairly simple. So on the, this is taken from the uh, documentation, official documentation from, uh, from Microsoft. And you can see uh, top left that we have the Active Directory. And for, with, and for each computer account that you are going to, to manage with labs, you will have two attributes. The first one is the admin password which is in clear text, on the password expiration time. So of course, the admin password is not readable by anyone on the domain. By default, it's only by the uh, domain admin. And then on the bottom of this image, you will see the manage machine. 
with the component that is actually a DLL that will, uh, that will um, uh, handle all the password management things and that will do some controls on, on so on. So I'm just going to explain quite quickly how it works. It works with GPO, so you know, group policy object. As soon as you um, enable LAPS, then at each GPO update, uh, the uh, local DLL on the workstation will uh, check uh, the attributes on the uh, domain controller to see if, whether or not, the uh, local uh, password should be changed or not. So if it is the case, it will generate a new one, and then store this new clear text password on the domain, and after this, it will set that on the local machine. So it's quite trivial, actually, just that this uh, DLL is going to uh, do that and checking with uh, the dates, what's going on, and so on. Um, yeah. Yes. So basically, the computer needs to have re uh, right access to the co uh, expiration time and the password to update it, and also to can read uh, the expiration time to see if the password must be re uh, reset or not. So basically, we uh, f um, we can use uh, interoperability authority system account to uh, manipulate these attributes. So as a system on the, comp on the managed computer, we can uh, easily um, uh, change pass the, the password of the attributes and so uh, bypass completely uh, the policy ma Maxim mentioned. So it's uh, such random password. And we can also uh, update the expiration time. So for those that are curious, uh, this, va this strange value is it's uh, 30 days converted in a uh, uh, 100 uh, nanoseconds intervals elapsed since the 1st January of uh, 1601, so something like that. So really strange uh, timestamps. And so this was on the manager client. And uh, on the, the server side, before messing with the attributes, the password is really complex, really random, expires in uh, November. And after uh, we messed uh, with the attributes, the password is, uh, is changed on the attributes and the expression time also. But in fact, the ad real admin password is not changed. And in this case, it's still this if you want to use uh, the password uh, locally on the computer. So we um, decided to continue our researches so in fact, just continue to read the, the well-documented uh, documentation and uh, also I made some uh, Google queries. So uh, the DLL on a um, client side is named ADMPWAD.dll. So if we Google that, uh, we see easily that it was an open source project developed uh, back in uh, 2011 to 2012. And, uh, uh, later adopted as labs uh, since uh, two years ago. And so first observation uh, when uh, playing with the, the GPUs, uh, no integrity checks or signature verification is performed on the DLL, and the old solution is uh, compatible with the labs. So basically we can just copy the old DLL, replace on our computer, and it works. So. It, since it's an open source project, we decided to, to read the code and to, to exploit it. So um, but we elaborated three uh, scenarios, one post-exploitation uh, persistence and two uh, elevation of privileges. Uh, for the elevation of privileges, it will depend on how LAPS is deployed and uh, the, um, the, how uh, the machine is patched. Is patched. Sorry. And um, so both the password change and um, ritual may be, uh, could be triggered uh, by a, a lot of, uh, of trigger and uh, we can recover the password uh, by many channels. It will depend uh, or where, on when the, where the attacker is, uh, if he has physical access to the machine or on the land, on the internet, and it depends also of uh, other uh, um, controls in the network. So for our POC, we decided to, uh, that uh, we want to appear as normal as possible. And uh, we, we said that the attacker have a physical access to the computer. 
uh, we will we want to have the password synced with uh, the AD. So the password return in the AD is the same as the real uh, uh, local admin password. And uh, um, and so for our POC, we we decided to have the simplest uh, f um, functionality. So uh, we can bypass the expression time if a special flag exists. So in our case, it will be a, a, fl uh, a file named backdoor.txt placed at a special location. And the password will be written in a, in a, f f in a file just uh, just uh, near the back door, and we'll, uh, so we will have the password at uh, each uh, password chain, in fact. And to be uh, as uh, normal, we uh, copy the same properties of the new DLL, and we signed the DLL uh, by using the, this project, Sictif. Basically, uh, this tool uh, uh, allows us to rip the signature from a real uh, signed a binary and to paste it in another uh, binary. But uh, of course, if you check the signature, it's not a real signature, but it has a signature. So I would, yeah. I would just wrap up on this. Uh, so uh, you understood that, OK, LAPS is one DLL that is present on the server. Then uh, by uh, just uh, playing with the source code of the equivalent open source solution, well, the previous solution that inspired Microsoft to uh, actually uh, uh, use and define LAPS. Uh, now what we have done is just, okay, since there is one DLL, uh, we may benefit from some temporary admin privileges in order to replace this legit uh, DLL with our own DLL, which is just backdoored in order for uh, us to be able to retrieve the uh, local admin password each time it change or each time we want it. But then we would not need any more the uh, admin privileges in order to trigger that backdoor, okay? So this is what uh, Antoine is going to demonstrate now. So basically, two computers. On the right side, it's the domain controller with the, the labs fancy UI. Uh, we see in the, in the screenshot. And the left side, it's a computer. Uh, for whatever reason, we managed to have uh, administrator privileges, authority system, so we can uh, exploit a, a, a misconfiguration, a missing patch, uh, whatever we want. This is not uh, our, our scenario. Our scenario is real long-term persistence. So basically, what I, I will just do is copy the DLL I have on my uh, desktop. And so, yes, for uh, curious, I'm not admin. Yes, USC prompt. So I will copy the um, backdoored DLL uh, and replace the legitimate ones. Yes, so just uh, replace the DLL. So now I've lost my admin privileges. No, no, no more privileges. Um, and I will ask the, the computer to update uh, its, uh, its GPU as a, a standard user. GP update. Sorry. And so. As my password is not expired and I have not um, asked for a reset, password is not changed, it's still this one. Now, I want to have admin privileges. I want to, uh, to perform some uh, admin task. So I will uh, plant my, my backdoor.txt file. Yes. and. Same as uh, as earlier, I will ask an update of the GPU for the computer. And yeah, magic happens. Some file, random stuff. And on the domain controller, if I update, I uh, ask for the new the to see the password for the W10 uh, computers. It's the same things, and the things in fact just. 
the look the standard. So yeah. And so now I have the admin privileges back. And if I, I leave my backdoor and I remove the password, I can update the GPO and I will have a new, a new password despite the expiration time. And uh, so once the backdoor is not present, since the password is not expired, I know I, no admin have made a um, requested a, a change of password. Password will not be changed. But if the password expire or, or reset uh, admin side, so request was successful. Next GPU update password will be changed. So basically, every time a password will be expired or uh, a re a reset from the admin, we will have the password uh, on uh, our file. And just as I mentioned, it's our POC. Uh, we can e easily imagine that this password will be uh, sent uh, to a CNC or other uh, stuff uh, to retrieve the password depending on the, the attacker situation. So, Max? Yep, thanks. So, as you can see, we just uh, replaced the uh, official DLL with our own, which is backdoored, which can, we can use with many uh, complex stuff in order to get and retrieve or to ask the password to be uh, changed so that we can have access to, to it. Of course, we can imagine plenty of other ways to do it in a more stealthy manner, but that was just for, for our POC, okay? Um, uh, before we move on to the next demo, uh, let's just have a few words about the how we could deploy LAPS. Uh, the first method is just to uh, install it with the MSI package, as you can see with this uh, command line. And another documented method is just to copy paste the DLL uh, on the local workstation and then register the DLL with its functions with the uh, program uh, reg uh, register serving uh, 32.exe. However, if uh, you combine this with some bad practices with which of course happen on a big network on with lazy admins and so on, then uh, those would allow some escalation of privilege. Uh, one point about, about uh, escalation of privilege, we, since this is an MSI, uh, if uh, someday you uh, find an old uh, Windows 7 uh, on um, uh, a domain that is uh, managed on the part of the domain, then you may be able to uh, do some privilege escalation uh, on stealthy privilege escalation by just uh, using the backdoor MSI in order to replace the official one. So this is a known bug. It's not a bug about LAPS. It's a bug about uh, MSC package on the way they could be installed. But uh, let's not spend too much time on this. Uh, I will let Antoine just do another demo. This one, it works on an up-to-date system. Just the mistake that has been done by the admin is to deploy the uh, ADM, uh, PWD.dll from a user readable location. So of course, if we manage to replace it, then uh, we will we could do the same uh, kind of scenario, but then we will do our escalation of uh, privileges. Yes, so same configuration as earlier. It's actually the same domain controller. And on the left side, another computer. Um, and so, uh, as Max mentioned, in this scenario, labs have been deployed just by copy-paste the DLL. So the DLL is not likely to be uh, on the um, default path we, we saw earlier. So basically, we, it's just a, a registry value we can get by PowerShell or just by browsing the, the registry that says where the DLL is. So in this case, it's C uh, labs uh, IDM uh, PWD DLL. And so as earlier, I will just have to to replace the, the DLL. But this time, I don't need uh, um, some admin privileges. I just have to, to copy the backdoor DLL and paste it uh, to replace it. Yes, I want to replace it. Uh, yeah. And so... Uh, uh, just uh, just uh, like uh, like before, if I plant my backdoor, up, 
And uh, I just ask from an update of the GPU. And yeah, same as earlier. We have uh, full control on the admin password. Uh, I, I did not make the full demo like uh, earlier because it's really the same thing. But on this case, uh, we didn't have to elevate it to our privileges because uh, the admin were lazy and just uh, paste the DLL uh, on a user writable uh, folder. And so like, uh, yeah. basically uh, it's simple. Yes. So, Max. Okay, so uh, what Antoine just demonstrated is that with this method, actually, uh, it's quite stealthy because if we decide to generate a new password, then we can do it. And if we just want the password to be accessible for us without having to do any interaction, then replacing the, the DLL allows us to do it uh, on the long term. So now comes the recommendation part. So, of course, you, you understood it. The main problem is that there is no validation of the integrity nor the signature of this DLL. Um, so one way to uh, do that would be, let's say, to use some awesomeness on, of uh, PowerShell v5 and just uh, do some calculation with the file hash, uh, verify the uh, signature correctly. Uh, however, since we are in some scenarios in which we have access uh, to admin privileges or uh, that the system is vulnerable to some uh, EOP or whatever, then uh, you might want to consider to read the paper of uh, Matt Grabber, who demonstrated that as soon as you have admin privileges, then you will be able to corrupt all the validation routines on a Windows workstation. So as soon as you have admin privileges, everything that will calculate hash, everything that will uh, validate signature locally on the workstation could be corrupted, of, of, could be corrupted, of course. And again, uh, for those of you who think about a strict application whitelisting on Windows, that's the same. Uh, Matt Grabber demonstrated that even in the uh, context of very strict application whitelisting, it is possible to corrupt the uh, signature ver verification and validation. So another possible recommendation would be to uh, intensively monitor everything that would happen on the server side because this is where the uh, attributes are monitored. Oh, sorry, uh, change. So, of course, you will have to uh, enable some logging on your domain controller. I'm quite sure that all of you already done that. And uh, one way to do it is to monitor the changes of the password. But since this password has some special uh, attributes in order to prevent anyone to read it, then you will have to change uh, the never auditing bit of the search flags of the attribute on the domain controller. But if you do that, of course, it would be a very bad idea because uh, as soon as you put that, then you will have the clear text local admin password that will show up in the logs. So if you are proper segregation of duties when operating your Microsoft infrastructure, then everyone that has access to the logs will be able to get all the local admin password on your uh, environment. So it's maybe something you don't want to happen. The other option, the alternative, will be to monitor the changes in the uh, expiration time on the domain controller uh, of this uh, attribute. But once again, since uh, we are the owner of the local DLL, we could choose when we change the password not to change the expiration time or uh, the other way around to mess with it so that we can uh, just uh, uh, mess with the admins on the blue team, basically. Uh, another alternative would be to monitor on the client side. Uh, Labs provides such uh, logging, but it is not enabled by default. You would have to change some values in the registry keys in order to uh, log everything. So that's nice, but that's the default, and that's with the regular DLL. If we plant our own DLL, once again, we could decide to ignore this setting and to uh, log whatever we want, to erase the log or on, or on anything else, just to remain still stealthy. So as a conclusion, uh, LAPS seems to be a convenient way to solve the uh, local admin uh, problem that every big infrastructure would face. But since it is designed with simplicity, with simple attributes and some uh, rights, then sometimes it's not uh, bulletproof. And if you combine this with uh, admin mistakes and operational mistakes, then it could be critical, actually. Um, 
Finally, for those of you who are uh, familiar with uh, the uh, some stealthy persistence technique, what we just demonstrated is some alternative of uh, uh, Mimikatz Mimilib that would be used as a malicious security support provider. So if you want detail about that, uh, I invite you to read uh, this nice paper. We will keep just in mind that it's not written like that in the paper, but it works in a local admin scenario too. So uh, our contribution is with providing some DLL that looks a lot, a lot like the official one, but just do something that is in our interest as opposed to uh, uh, Mimilib. And finally, detecting our tactic, our tactic uh, could be quite complex because if you rely on monitoring, on correlating logs on the servers, on the workstations, then you will have to do it on all workstations and you will have to uh, um, consider that your workstations, your workstations are not already corrupted, which is questionable if uh, some people manage to get uh, admin privileges. So in terms of future work, the Creator of uh, the initial creator of Flaps uh, continue to work on his own solution that is uh, currently selling. I guess he, he called that uh, ADM uh, PWG.E for enterprise, and there are some interesting features uh, in this, such as um, the maintenance of password history, uh, the encryption of the um, attributes on the domain controller, and on some other uh, uh, goodness. But this is something to to follow. And for some of you who would like to have uh, the feedback of uh, Microsoft, because when we uh, found this, when uh, we wanted to discuss that with them, so for the first scenario, the stealthy persistent technique, uh, considering that we need uh, admin privileges already, uh, it's normal, we expected that they are not considering that as a vulnerability that they would fix. So actually for the persistence, it is still a valid method that you would use, uh, because Microsoft is not going to do anything about that, which is normal according to their current threat model and, and strategy. And then, uh, I think it's uh, the uh, humble moment because when we were working on the MSI uh, repair bug, uh, we thought that we, we found a very interesting zero day uh, crazy stuff uh, that would work on every uh, uh, Windows system. Uh, actually, we kind of messed up with our VM versions and we spoke about Microsoft about a problem that they fixed like three years ago. Yeah. So yeah, shame on us, uh, more haste, less speed. Another point uh, to conclude, uh, because I really want to thank uh, Microsoft on the uh, Security Response Center because they were very kind with us, even if we screwed up some uh, some versions on uh, some emails. Uh, and, uh, actually, uh, Jason, our contact, even suggested that the engineering team would review the slides uh, in order to give the feedback and just to correct some uh, some things. So I think it is uh, something very interesting that I wanted to share with you in order to encourage you to discuss with them because they are available and uh, they really are willing to to help actually. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Jason. Thank you, you Jason. Right, if you read that. Yeah. Thank you very much. We are now ready for your questions. Thank you. Okay. So. Questions? No questions? Okay, well, you guys will be around if people yeah, want to. Yeah, sure, of course. We'll uh, stay there. Speak to you. We'll be around. Okay, thank, thank you so you much. Again. Thank you.